My name is Christopher Johnson. These are my teammates, Laura Castellanos, Christopher Matthews, and Rashid Baluli. Thank you for this opportunity. We're ready to begin. We appreciate the opportunity that we have to present to you at Boston Children's Hospital about your overall strategy. We understand specifically we've been tasked with identifying bundle payment process and how you want to approach cost identification for your organization. We specifically want to give a recommendation on what that cost is, how it works, why it's beneficial for your organization, how it impacts physician bonus structure, you know, what the impact on quality and patient life is. We understand that's a lot of information to cover in a short amount of time. We want to give a 100,000 foot view. We'll focus on a few specific topics and then at the end if you have any cause for clarification or additional things you'd like to know, we'd be happy to answer those questions. So on our journey to finding the ideal bundle payment method for Boston Children's Hospital, we, we started by looking at all the methods provided for us. And we started with the ratio of cost to charges method. Now this is a method that uses the hospital's charge master. And what it does is it takes a percentage of each of the charges for all their procedures and assigns that as the cost for each of their procedures. Now, although this is a system that's easy to implement and is simple to maintain, from the very beginning we saw that this would be a less than ideal method for Boston Children's, Boston Children's Hospital simply because of the fact that, that by taking a percentage of your charges and assigning that as your cost, it's not actually giving you true, accurate data on how much it's costing the hospital to provide that care to the patient. And at the center of bundle payment methods, if you do not have uh, accurate data, you won't be able to have effective bundle payments. So then we moved on to the relative value unit method, or the RVU method. This is a more popular method. It uses standardized units of value, or RVUs, and assigns each procedure throughout all departments a certain amount of RVUs. And that is based on certain criteria, such as, such as the um, intensity required for that procedure, or the skill required to carry out uh, the treatment. Now, we saw two glaring flaws in this method from the beginning, which told us that, again, this would not be the right fit for Boston Children's Hospital. The first is that it's going to incentivize physicians to focus more on the quantity of procedures and treatments that they're carrying out, rather than the quality with which they're providing that care. And because the quality of care is such a cornerstone for Boston Children's Hospital, we did not want to take away that focus from quality. And then the second reason is generally how RVUs are carried out in organizations. So typically, at the end of every fiscal year, the, uh, each procedure is re-examined to adjust the RVUs according to any changes that may have occurred in how that treatment is carried out. Now, the problem with this is if you make changes or innovations in the first quarter, the second quarter, or the third quarter, those changes are not going to be reflected in your hospital costs until the end of the fiscal year, hopefully at the end of, end of the fiscal year, if those changes are addressed. And again, if you do not have the accurate data on how much these procedures are costing you, you're not going to be able to have effective bundle payments. So that brought us to our third method, our proposed method, and the ideal method for Boston Children's Hospital. And that is time-driven activity-based costing. From here on out, we'll refer to it as either the time-driven method or the TDABC method. Now, and before we get into how this method works, we're going to talk about why we chose this specific method. And those reasons are threefold. So the first reason we chose this method is the same reason we identified flaws in the first two, and is that it is going to, in fact, give us accurate costing data. And in a second, we'll talk about how, through the use of process flowcharts and process mapping, these two tools will allow us to look in depth into each specific cost associated throughout the wide uh, range of the delivery of care. The second reason we chose this is because it'll allow us to bring together everyone who is involved in the provision of care. That's from nurses to physicians to administrative staff. It allows them to see in detail what part they play in providing the ultimate care for the patient. And by them focusing on this, they will all be incentivized to look at the final product that their work is providing, which is the quality of care that Boston Children's Hospital is giving to their patients. And the third reason we chose the time-driven method is actually a unique advantage for us, in that it will allow physicians to actually understand the costs that are associated with their delivery of care. Now, this is important because when they understand all the costs that are associated with the procedures that they're carrying out, it allows them to be proactive and innovative in, look, in looking for areas of opportunity. So if they see uh, opportunity for reducing the costs, reducing the time taken to carry out these procedures, 
It'll help the hospital save money. It'll help the physician save time. And at the end of the day, it will help the, or it will give the patients the highest quality of care that we can give them. Now that you understand why we chose this method, the specific reasons, we're now going to talk about how this method fits into Boston Children's Hospital and how it will be used. Your organization specifically wants to target the best way of attending bundle payments. We can't do that with the accurate costs. Built within TDABC is the mechanism to identify what those costs, and that's specifically process mapping. Process maps are a way to identify all the different procedure costs and specific pathways that a procedure might have. So in a long leg cast, you might have a Gore-Tex wrapping, or you might have different equipment that might be used. If we can map out all the different processes and allocate how much of a resource of clinical staff or physician time is sent with all those procedures, we can have an accurate amount of time. Now, it's going to take time to do this. We have to have input from all sorts of departments because we they are the experts. They're the ground foot soldiers that understand all that data. So we need their time. We're not going to say to the staff, all right, in a fortnight, we're going to have all the information accurate. It's not going to be that simple, but it will be worthwhile because it'll be accurate information. Give me, I'll give you an example. My wife and I were driving to Houston. Houston's not too complicated, but it's a big city. We arrived at a destination. A few weeks later, she had to go back. She didn't know how to get there. And I was like, sweetie, we went together. How did you not know? And she said, because I didn't have to pay attention. I, I trusted you to get us there. She didn't worry about it. If in our organization, we don't have our clinical teams and our physicians and all of our staff understanding why we're getting there and how we're getting there, they can't feel empowered to make the changes themselves. And I understand that we're only specifically going on a few procedures right now, but house-wide, we probably want to institute CDABC because it's effective at identifying those costs and giving us accurate information. We want our staff to be able to feel empowered to make the changes, be champions of change long-term. I understand that buy-in is difficult. It's hard to get people on board with any type of change that administration makes. But if they have the opportunity to participate from the initial level, mapping out a process and getting accurate information, they'll feel empowered and want to embrace that the entire time that they're doing it. The process maps, as previously mentioned, shows the amount of time that the patient uses a resource. The next step is uh, placing a value on how much that resource costs. This is where the capacity cost rate comes in. That is, how much it costs per minute a resource to be available for patient-related work. You can see in our exhibit that we have come up with capacity cost per minute rates for the three resources used in the orthopedic cast room. In the case of the orthopedic surgeon, we were able to calculate a capacity cost rate of $7 per minute. This cost was, uh, was calculated by taking the total resource costs available of supplying this surgeon and dividing that total amount by the total available minutes that this surgeon had per year to see a patient. Once you calculate the capacity cost rates, you can then reapply it back to the process maps in order to generate a true and accurate total procedure cost. Now, not only will an accurate capacity cost rate and process map truly recognize the time and the value and the hard work of our physicians, but will also translate into better decisions and total procedure costs needed for bundled payments. It's our belief that individuals and organizations behave in a way that they're incentivized to behave. In other words, if Boston Children's Hospital wants their staff and physicians to improve the quality, well then we're gonna have to, re we're gonna have to reward them for doing so. By utilizing the TDABC method, we can create an equitable bundled payment that can offer a financial incentive bonus structure for our physicians based on the outcomes of their work. An example of such a model could revolve around a risk share pool where a physician is, is, um, can earn up to 20% on their salary if uh, defined based on the outcome measures. In order for this to be effective, Boston Children's and our physicians will need to be able to will need to be engaged and collaborate and align their incentives in order to help reduce complications, avoid readmissions, and use the resources effectively and efficiently. Which brings our focus to creating an outcome measurement system that can measure health outcomes as well as financial outcomes that will increase the value for our patients. 
We're creating those outcome measures by using a quality improvement physician-led initiative named SCAMS, Standardized Clinical Assessment and Management Plan. SCAMS develops process mapping and analyzes the pathway outcome to then develop a consensus-based flexible plan as a built-in feedback mechanism for continuous improvement and innovation. I, we know that here at Boston Children's, our clinicians will greatly benefit from an evidence-based standards that improve practice guidelines so they can reduce cost, reduce um, overutilization of our resources, and overall improve our patient care. We're confident that the TDABC method will allow us to provide our patient with accurate cost and value measurements that will transform healthcare. We'll also be able to have our patients shop around for health plans based on value. Our patients will also be able to find the best provider teams for their specific medical condition. And the TDABC method creates a common information platform that will unleash innovation based on the shared understanding of the actual process of care for those specific conditions. So you may ask, how does TDABC provide value and impact the quality of our care? We'll do this by integrating care. Our patients, providers, and payers will now work together to achieve the best possible outcomes. We'll focus on creating the best multidisciplinary teams that will create efficient workflows and overall impact the quality of their care. Joint accountability. Everyone will be held responsible to reduce the cost of our resources and to provide better care for our patients. Our physicians will also be able to efficiently coordinate and possibly impact the care of our patients. Also, by implementing the TDABC method, we'll have an accurate costing tool that will help us assess and address improvement areas where we can ultimately reduce our cost. And finally, by having value-based health outcomes, we'll be able to focus our care around our patients. We understand that we want to be able to provide for our patients the best care long-term. And TDABC lets us identify what those costs are now and make continual adjustments progressively. I understand that healthcare reform is, is a buzz and political decisions will change everything. But if we can identify our costs and make those pay the bundle payments specifically on what we cost to do it, we're not going to be affected by outside influences, reimbursement, structures from payers. They won't affect our quality because we'll have based our decisions on information that we develop. Because if we're basing our structure on something that someone else decides, we have to be continually reactive, which is very time consuming and very expensive. But if we identify what our costs are, and make our decisions on what our decisions are, then we can make appropriate decisions for long-term goals and long-term plans, and identify what the high revenue ones, identify how it's gonna help our patients the most, and focus on those. We understand that it's a difficult decision, but we recommend that TDABC is what's appropriate for Boston Children's Hospital. We appreciate this opportunity, thank you. Thank you, it was a good presentation, very solid presentation. Um, just uh, curious, in, in, your pre in, in the presentation, uh, at least two times you mentioned uh, the, the fostering of innovation. What does that mean? So what that means is, excuse me, um, because, okay, so the tool that we use, which is process flow charts, which is central to the time-driven method, what that allows us to do is allows everyone involved in that care to look at how that care is provided to the patient. So what it does, um, the slide that we showed you of the example process flow chart, what that allows us to do is identify areas of opportunity. So if there is a way to do it better, if there's a way to do it faster or less costly, actually seeing it written down and panned out on paper. It allows not only our physicians, but our nursing staff, administrative staff, takes all their uh, questions and consideration. So it allows everyone to say, you know what, maybe if we didn't do this part, Instead, we did it this way, it makes us more effective, it would maybe cost us less, and it would increase the quality. So allowing everyone to see exactly what the process is and really asking those questions, because maybe the administrative staff doesn't truly understand what the nursing staff is doing in that process, but everyone has to, at some point in that process, work together. So it allows the administrative staff to you know, communicate better with the nursing staff, say, hey, why do we do it this way? Why don't we do it this way? That's what it means by innovating the care. Let me just follow up quickly. I, I appreciate that answer. So, but what you just described is uh, 
introspective analysis. In other words, analyzing what you do and how you do it, if I understand that correctly, right. with process mapping being a part of that. Is there a role for benchmarking externally, I mean, in terms of best practices? What? I would say absolutely yes. Understandably, Boston Children's Hospital is going to incorporate new people every day. There's, you know, recent graduates that have been studying benchmarks, and by being able to adjust the costing method continually, they will be able to implement those new innovations or those new benchmarks and identify how it is that we're successful. Now, we don't want to necessarily base what we're doing on everyone else unless we can find new ways of appreciating that. If it's within a strategy of the organization to, you know, take new benchmarking, then we want to do that. But if our organization wants to specifically focus on the research aspect or focus on you know specific patient initiatives then we don't want to, to limit those opportunities just for innovation's sake wonderful job your presentation was very very clear and very straightforward now I have a question why not the RVU method it would obviously be a lot cheaper it wouldn't be as costly to implement we're already doing it in a sense, it does the same thing as the TDABC, you know, the process mapping, the costing. So a couple, a couple things we saw with the RVU method. And the first one was the way it incentivizes physicians. So a lot of the physician bonus models that we saw, um, what, it, what they do is physicians have to accumulate a minimum number of RVUs to even be eligible for a bonus. And then their bonus is determined by how many RVUs past that minimum they get. So really you're incentivizing them more to carry out as many procedures as they possibly can, rather than allowing them to focus on the individual quality of care that they're providing for each patient. And so that was a big one for us. We didn't want to take away from the quality. And then the second is, like I mentioned, the way that RVUs are carried out, the fact that they're um, reviewed at the end of every fiscal year. Even our case that we based our presentation on, it says some departments just didn't update their RVUs for years. They just skipped it at the end of the year. So if we're going to have effective cost data, which we truly believe is the cornerstone of having effective bundled payments, if you're going to actually get that accurate cost data, the RVU method is not the right way. Now, it is very popular, of course, but it could also be a you know, it could be popular because some it's it allows people to more easily you know push it aside. It doesn't take as much um, action on the part of the staff, the hospital staff, to truly go after those RVUs and keep them updated. So we really want to focus on having that accurate cost data. And we felt the RVU method, it, it can in some ways, like I said, it's better than the RCC method, but the TDABC method really with the process flowcharts allows us to more accurately identify those costs. Excellent presentation. Well done. Uh, with the approach of using the uh, TDABC, um, how could or would you address the uh, cost associated with uh, no-shows, uh, scheduling, and uh, communication problems that develop? You want to answer? Okay. So I, I understand those are real things that happen. You know, people will not show up. Scheduling is difficult. Not only do we want to map out the processes, but in coordination, understanding is how are people scheduled? Because lean methodology specifically talks about how, you know, things are moving in a specific throughput. Understandably, there's going to be changes, but with enough data, once we collect that, we can factor in variances. If, if a patient codes on a table, that's a real cost that as a hospital we have to you know, absorb. But with enough of the information, there will be, there will be costs that are less encumbersome for our organization. So to incorporate every variant with enough data, we should be able to factor out changes in scheduling and changing of no-shows. But then also identifying what's our process for identifying which patients aren't coming. And, and we've, so lamented, we've only uh, engaged in these processes, but there's processes administratively that we'd like to map out and identify and improve over time.